No introduction needed, bro. No introduction needed. And to everyone who's stopping by to the channel, if this is your first time here, I want to say, usually I try to give off an uh, intro, you know, the start of the video, start the flow of the video, the flow of the live stream. But, you know, a little bit of frustration that I want to let out, a little bit of the concerns I want to let out. Um, and also, give you guys a quick disclaimer. I might get ranty here and there during this video. I'm not really, like, going to be raging, screaming and loud because I'm past that part. Game ended a few hours ago, but we got to talk about this, man. I mean, where do I even start? This is the second year on this YouTube channel that I've had uh, where at the end of the second round of the playoffs, I'm making a video talking about the end of the Sixers season. <sighs> and it sucks, man. It sucks. Last year, I made a video ranting about the team, the season being over, whatever, whatever. But this this one is just, it, it just sucks. Um, and first, before I start ranting and getting into everything, congrats to Miami Heat. Congrats to Jimmy Butler. Um, and, and... You know, good luck in the conference finals because, you know, the Sixers always lose in the second round. So we're always congratulating another team for making the conference finals. So congratulations to the Sixers or to the – I wish I could be saying that. Congratulations to the Heat. Um, and we'll see what happens when you guys move on, man. Um, good luck in the conference finals. Shout out to Jimmy Butler too, man. I know he didn't have a long career here, but I still love, bro. But now let's talk about the Sixers. So – I don't even know where to start. We, I mean, we can start this whole game. We can start the series. We can we can start wherever. But the Sixers this season coming in, we had a lot of questions. I mean, we had we had a lot of questions. You know, what what's the team gonna look like? Tyrese Maxey, how is he gonna be picking up a starting role in this offense? And how are we going to climb this Ben Simmons hurdle? Is he going to get traded? When is he going to get traded? What team is he getting traded to? Etc. 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 There was a lot of noise around the Sixers team this year. Joel Embiid obviously repeating um, another amazing season. Um, last season, uh, putting up an MVP caliber season. This season, doing the same thing. Obviously, he didn't win it, but I mean, I, I know no one likes being number two. But the fact that now back-to-back -back seasons, Joel Embiid has had monster seasons, finished top two in MVP votings back-to-back -back years. I mean, like I said, you never want to be number two. But something to be, you know, it's, it's encouraging. It's definitely encouraging. I mean, you basically, Joel Embiid turned himself into a superstar. Um, and this past season played his most games he's ever had in his career. Thought he got over an injury hurdle. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But whatever, right? So we come into the season and we get some questions answered. I mean, Tyrese Maxey goes into the Rising it was a rising Star this year. Obviously played the Rising Stars game. And he just becomes one of the more exciting young guards in this league and the sky's the limit for maxi man the sky's the limit i mean this dude's explosive this dude is fun great personality all of the above i mean we all know how maxi is i don't really have to go and break it obviously break down this whole game but he came out played well this year ben simmons another question this year how you gonna climb that hurdle we climbed that hurdle and we made a trade at the deadline and this is where we trade for James Harden, and we finally got Ben Simmons out of here. And I want to say, too, I even, no, no matter how good or bad James Harden has played in this playoffs, I don't regret that trade one bit. And even, even in hindsight, I'm still making that deal if that's up there. Um, because just we could not have the toxicness in, in, in the environment with Ben Simmons just being a part of this roster and just wasting a roster spot essentially um and i know james harden did not perform well obviously i'm not excusing them and we're gonna get a lot of james harden haters <laughs> throughout this comment section probably throughout twitter instagram whatever but we made the trade for james harden and now we're here in the playoffs and i got a text before making this video shout out to my guy roach entertainment youtuber content creator himself he said bro i told you about james harden in the playoffs and you know James Harden, I mean, obviously, this is not fully his fault. There's a lot of other problems with this team than just James Harden, but definitely did not play consistent enough when it comes to scoring the basketball. I mean, in game four, the electricity, the confidence, the shot-making ability that James Harden had putting up 31 points in game four, that was exciting. We, If we could have got that more times this series, that would have been amazing, but... 
we did it and now we're here so and it sucks and james harden i'm glad that he said his press conference you know whatever as far as the contract goes whatever it takes for the team to win i'm willing to take that deal and help make this team better um, and that's kind of good. I mean, that's a good sign. It's probably the best thing that was said or that happened for us today was James Harden saying, not openly saying, yo, I'm taking a pay cut. You can pay me like $2 million a year. But he basically, he was asked about his contract and would he take a pay cut. He said, whatever helps this team to win and get better for next season. And honestly, I respect that because no matter what you think about James Harden, the player, there was a lot of things coming out um, as we traded for him when Houston traded him away. Um, it's his commitment to franchises, you know, if he doesn't win in Philly or if he doesn't do this or that, you know, he's going to win out. He's going to try to force his way. But he he's he, he committed to this team again for next season. Rather, he opts into his deal or he takes a pay cut or he, rather he gets extension no matter what. It, it It's at least encouraging. Right. And I know we don't I know six fans watching this. We can't really get any good out of this day. It's really nothing good. But. At least, it's, at least he's committed, right? At least he's committed. He can get that hamstring fully healed, whatever, this offseason. Focus on basketball, whatever, right? Cool, cool, cool. So, as far as James Harden goes, I wish he was better in this year's playoffs. I wish he was better um, scoring-wise. I wish he was more consistent. Loved him as a playmaker this year. Loved him as a playmaker, but wished I just at times where I wanted him to be aggressive, he wasn't. And he didn't show up. He didn't show up enough. He didn't. He wasn't aggressive enough when it mattered most, and that's no excuse to him. I welcome him back next year, but it is what it is. Um, and obviously, I don't expect him to leave because Daryl Morey's our GM, and Daryl Morey's like kind of like that second father to him when it comes to the basketball life of James Harden. So definitely, he's not going anywhere. Um, so there you go. <sighs> Time to talk about Embiid. Joel Embiid, man. I mean, I love this dude, man. I, no matter what, I love Embiid, my favorite player in the league currently. Um, One of my favorite players of all time already, and I love what he brings to the table. I mean, back-to-back -back MVP caliber seasons, being a multiple-time All-Star, dominating the league with the Sixer uniform on, embracing the city of Philadelphia. I mean, you couldn't have asked for more, man. You couldn't have asked for more from Embiid, in the, especially in the regular season. Um, but the most frustrating thing about Embiid is that he worked on the last two off seasons. He's worked on conditioning. He's worked on limiting his injuries. He's worked on his nutrition, his diet, being more healthy as a human, as a guy, as a basketball player. But this season, um, or this postseason, because he was healthy most of the season, this playoffs... The injuries just found him this time. It's, he didn't He didn't get injured. He didn't, you know, do anything to get himself injured. It just seemed like this time the injuries found him. And before I say this, not blaming Siakam, not throwing dirt on Siakam's name. But it's unfortunate that our coach, we had a 20-point lead with like three and a half minutes left, would even play our star player. And it's just even more unfortunate and that Siakam just drove, led with his elbow, and just swiped and beat across the face and led to a concussion and an orbital fracture, which hurt his uh, eye and just ah, disturbing, man. It's just disturbing. Um, and the thumb injury, he aggravated it in the playoffs as well. That wasn't a big issue, at least in the rest of the Raptors series, he was fine. Um, so that's good. That's great. I'm happy. I was happy about that. Um, the thumb didn't affect, like I said, it didn't affect him in the Raptors series. The Heat series, his shooting was a little bit off. Rather, that accumulated from the eye, accumulated from the thumb, or just accumulated from whatever. So, you know, shout out to Embiid. Go get healthy, man. Go get healthy. Talk to the front office next season. And, yeah, man, I love Joel Embiid, and that's all I have to say about him um, to end off the now, season. it's time to talk about Doc Rivers and his mishaps this season. Um, Where do I just start with this guy, man? And this is the part where it really gets ranty and where I really start to get frustrated because <sighs> we got to fire him. We got to. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And the sad part about this whole entire thing is I don't think he will be fired. He was asked at his press conference today after the game, Does he is he concerned about his job security? And his answer 
was honestly the most confident answer Doc Rivers has given as his time as Sixers head coach was, no, I'm never worried about my job security. I've done such a great job. I've gotten this here, blah, 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 blah. He went on the like little rant about, you know, what he's done, especially as a Sixers coach. And he said, he sounds so confident. I don't think he's getting fired, y'all. Now, obviously, by the time I post this video, might be he might he might actually get fired, but I don't know. He answered that question so confidently. I think he might have had a talk with the front office before this game or before the playoffs, and they might have told him, no matter what, we'll give you another chance so you can come back next year. Because the way he answered that question confidently, it, it was it seemed like he coming back. And no disrespect to Doctor is the guy. I love him uh, as a person. I think he's a really good guy. Um, he's a he connects with the players. He's a, he's a good uh, players coach, as you would call it. You know, the players love him. But I just feel like, you know, he was very successful with the Celtics. Had a great team there. Coached them well. Had some great regular season teams with the Clippers. But I feel like his coaching scheme is a little bit outdated for today's, especially as we evolve and evolve in the NBA. And he, he lacks adjustments. Obviously, he lacks adjustments. He likes making big-time adjustments and pivotal series. And once a team makes an adjustment on him, and this is how he chokes 3-1 leads, once a team makes an adjustment on him, he's not going to adjust to their adjustment, which you need to be an elite-level coach. In order to be an elite-level coach, you got to be able to adjust to another coach's adjustments, man. That's just, especially in a playoff series, man. It's the name of the game. It's the name of the game, man. Adjusting is, is, is I, I think personally, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think personally the number one thing in coaching is, you know, your scheme matters, how you're going to use players matter, but adjustments is one I think is the biggest thing because if you're not going to adjust, <laughs> then we just going to be the same team doing the same things, playing the same way all year. We're going to be easily beatable because teams going to know what we're going to do and they know we're not going to be able to adjust to it. So that's that. That's that um, about Doc Rivers, man. And it is what it is, man. Um, I want to say before, you know, I close up this video and stuff like that. I have another video coming out um, of my best uh moments calling the six-year games um i've called a lot of them this year handful of them have a lot to choose from so can't wait to go through that dig through some files and uh you know do that but if this is the last game i was playing for tobias harris good luck to him in the future we don't really know what's the future for tobias harris he had an amazing first round of playoffs, and he had some good moments in the second round. Wherever he goes, good luck. I would not mind him coming back because I don't think he's a terrible player. The contract is just too much, though. If I don't, and I don't, I don't know if there's any chance we would be able to like somehow shorten or limit his deal. I don't know if that's possible, but if if there was any way. We could, you know, bring his contract down or in some way, shape, or form. I would do it in a heartbeat. And, I mean, I think the only way we could do that is buy it out and, like, re-sign him on a cheaper deal. But that would just put us in a hole just as an organization, so we couldn't do that. So, which Tobias Harris the best? Amazing person, a really chill dude. It seems like, you know, great locker room guy. Um, and he's a solid player. It's just the contract we gave him, we're going to have to find a way to move on for, from it and, it sucks because Tobias Harris, as good as Doc made him look in his system, especially last season, more so than this year, as great as Doc Rivers made him look, it is, it's probably going to have to end. It's probably going to have to end. So it sucks. We lost. It sucks. And, you know, it, it's definitely going to hurt me for a few days or, you know, obviously not going to be like depressed or anything, but, you know, not watching your team play. Um, and, you know, me calling so many Sixers games this year, me watching every, I've never missed a Sixers game. Rather, I called it on YouTube or not. I did not miss a Sixers game this year. So, you know, it's kind of that adjustment period, um, not being able to watch the Sixers, not being able to call Sixers games and stuff. It's going to be an adjustment period. But, you know, the channel, the content don't stop. You know, I told y'all if the Sixers do get eliminated, um, that I'll choose another series to do probably in the conference finals i'll continue to drop videos now i could put more in time and effort into baseball like i was doing before the nba playoffs started so that's great 
um, that's great news. We can put more time into, you know, building the baseball side of this channel and just get better. And so as far as the channel, just because the Sixers season is ended doesn't mean that I'm going to just disappear until the next regular season. Nah, we're going to keep getting better. We're going to keep upgrading. And we're going to keep, you know, we're going to keep the grind on stop, baby. Grind don't stop. I still got a lot more content. I still got a lot more stuff I could do on this channel that I haven't even, like, prepared to even start yet because other stuff that I can do, like, it's crazy the stuff I can do on this channel, you know? But that's going to be it for me, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I can't wait to drop this next Sixers video. Um, but other than that, man, the Sixers season is over, and that's it, man. That's it. So thank you to everyone who's watched my Sixers content all year. It's been great. It's been amazing. Go Sixers still until next season. Philadelphia 76ers fans. Hopefully, y'all still rock with me with all my other content. But if not, see y'all next season. But the content and the grind don't stop, baby. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Now that I'm fully calm, I was able to talk to y'all about it. You've been talking sports with MG Nas. And until next time, I'm out. Peace.